history's original heavy metal, unearthed from a dark underworld and processed by an arsenal of machinery. 18 pounds will start your car, and a tiny particle will unlock secrets of the past. It protects, but it also poisons, and it's the key to making majestic music. Now, the untold story of lead on Modern Marvels. Lead is an integral part of wonders not only to the eye, but also to the ear. Any guesses where the lead resides in the sweetest sounding organs? U.S. bullet manufacturers use up to 600 tons of lead per day. That's enough lead to make more than 65,000 car batteries, or over five and a half million lead crystal wine glasses. For centuries, lead has unassumingly helped fill the world with rich and resonant music. The organ in St. Joseph's Cathedral in Hartford, Connecticut has nearly 7,000 pipes, but only the largest are visible to churchgoers. Most of the smaller pipes are hidden from view, and all of those contain lead. There is no replacement for lead in an organ. You can't do it with aluminum. You can't uh, cast them out of pottery. Organ pipes have always been and will continue to have their own unique quality and sound. Lead contributes to that unique sound with its inherent pliability. It allows the pipes to vibrate as the air pushes through, producing richer, fuller tones. In a huge organ like St. Joseph's, the longest pipes are typically made of zinc or tin. That's because zinc and tin are stronger and lighter than lead, and lead pipes this long can't support their own weight. Even the shorter lead pipes need an added measure of strength. So they contain 50 to 70% tin, a mixture called spotted metal that doesn't compromise lead's tonal qualities. The organ at St. Joseph's was built here in 1960 at Austin Organs in Hartford. Its craftsmen have been using lead to make beautiful music since 1893. In the company's furnace, lead and tin ingots melt at 750 degrees and mix together within minutes. Removing impurities is simply a matter of adding a little wax, which ignites a fiery process called flashing. The wax interacts with the metal and brings all the impurities that are left in the metal to the top. After skimming off the impurities, workers let the molten metal cool to about 450 degrees. Then they pour it into a trough and quickly run it to the end of a stone table covered with linen. The sheet solidifies within seconds. As the sheet cools, the lead separates from the tin and spotted metal earns its name. After the sheets cure for two months to reduce their springiness, workers use a special plane to adjust their thickness. The thicker the pipe, the deeper its pitch. And the longer the pipe, the thicker the metal must be to support its weight. Workers complete the process by cutting the sheets to their prescribed lengths rolling and beating them into shape, and joining the seam with solder. Then it's up to head voicer, Dan Kingman, to give each pipe its distinct voice. He does this by creating a slit aptly called a mouth. The metal has to vibrate to a certain extent sympathetically with the, the, the tone that's being generated by the wind blowing through the pipe. The tin lead composition has the advantage of being soft enough for the voicer to, to manipulate, to cut, to pare the metal away, to adjust. Soft enough for that, but strong enough and responsive enough to make for good sounds. 
the slightest adjustment at the mouth of the pipe affects its sound. Because it is here that compressed air, the organ's breath, exits. By widening a hole at the foot of the pipe, Dan adjusts the speech of the pipe further and also increases its volume. It's now speaking right, it's a little soft. So we'll make it a little bit louder. A permanent set of tuned pipes on the back row of the voicing machine provides a reference pitch. Pipe is flat. He finishes his voicing work by trimming the pipe's length and adjusting its so-called tuning collar. I activate that pipe and listen to it with the one in the front and listen for beats to see if they're in or out of tune. And that is roughly voiced. Assemble the finely tuned voices of thousands of lead organ pipes, and music finds a new definition for the term heavy metal. It's no pipe dream that the element as harmful as it is helpful will continue to surround us with its many dimensions. <laughs>